Hey friends, welcome to my channel, let's get crafting. For this project, we are gonna be using this super popular gold basket that they have at the Dollar Tree right now. I love these, they come in a couple different shapes. And I decided that this basket has such large holes at the bottom that things just fall through it. Now, if you were putting just regular paper in it for like a paper holder, you'd be fine. But what I decided to do was line the bottom with some of these popsicle sticks in different sizes. I used these really large ones that I picked up from Walmart, and now I'm going in with tongue depressors to add a support at the bottom of these sticks to be able to sit nicely inside of the basket. So you can see here that I have three rows of supportive beams, we're just gonna call it that. And then when I flip it over, it's going to fit nicely inside of the grooves. And now you can put more than just paper inside of these baskets. Now I wanna make it look more appropriate for fall, so I'm gonna use a really pretty farmhouse dark tone to this. I'm gonna create a stain using some paint, brown, black, and some water, and just mix it together until I like the look of it. And then I'm just gonna go over it until I like the stain color. Once it was dry, I went ahead and took my pencil and I'm sketching on the word thankful because I thought that that would be really pretty to add to it. And then I'm just going back in with a fine tip brush and some white paint, and I'm taking my time going over it. Now, one of the fun things about hand painting letters just like this is that it just really develops a fun skill. The more you practice, the better you get. And I'm not super great at it, but I'm really good at freehanding and looking at something. So I looked at this word thankful with somebody else who was really good with calligraphy and I just sketched it until I liked it and then went over with my white paint. Now I wanna make sure my basket's gonna stay so I'm using a tool called the Cropodile. I talked about it in my last video and a couple of my videos in the past. It's my favorite tool. I punched some holes out and then I used some twine to thread it all together. The Cropodile goes through any metal and any wood, which is so awesome. Then on the sides, I created some handles using some rope from the Dollar Tree and then I'm gonna wrap around the ends where I brought them together with some twine to finish off the look. And then you're ready to display it somewhere on a table in your home. If you are enjoying this video so far, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to my channel, click the subscribe button because I have so many more videos coming out this fall and Christmas season. For this DIY, we are gonna be taking this long wood sign that you can get from the Dollar Tree. They have these around the summertime and I've been seeing some of them in different style so they are still having these in stores i found these recently in my dollar tree and we're going to take my miter box and we're going to use a 45 degree angle and we're going to cut two pieces this is going to be the piece left over we don't need two pieces that we like the height of them one a little taller one a little shorter and then we're going to flip it the other way and we're going to do a 45 degree cut again to create a rooftop. Now these signs, I've seen so many people do them so many different ways, and I thought it would be really cute to make these into little homes that you can use on a tiered tray or on a shelf, and it's just so fun because they only cost me a dollar. Now I picked up this paper pad from Joann's, I had a really great coupon for it, and it had so many beautiful prints for the fall time. And I'm gonna just take out this taupey brown Buffalo check paper and this scroll font paper. So now what I'm doing is I'm showing how I trace out my house. I like to make it one continuous piece versus trying to cut out all these different pieces of paper. And then you have weird seam lines. So what I'm doing is I started flat, traced the roof, rotated it, traced the other side of the roof, rotated it again, and now I'm gonna take my ruler and come back in and make the connecting joints where the side of the house is. Then you're gonna take your scissors, simply cut it out and glue it onto your house. See how it has a nice seamless look all the way around it because you've wrapped it versus having a bunch of different pieces of paper and it avoids you having to paint the house a white color or whatever, it just takes away one step. Now for the roof, we're gonna take 
some of those really thick long depressor sticks that you can pick up at Walmart they're really big and I'm going to just simply cut them down to the size that I need we need two different sizes because on the roof we want them to be able to miter into each other or meet up so one has to be just a hair longer than the other one and then I decided to do one rooftop where it has more of a darker black roof and then the other one is more of a really pretty walnut or amber looking rooftop so I'm just putting those on with some glue and then a really cute detail is taking a nail and first you're going to hammer it in straight to the side where it's going to let it get in there and then I rotated a little bit and hammered it the rest of the way now on the front of the house you can stop there or we can continue to keep adding some little details I added some little greenery, some twine, and then this little cute sunflower that I found at the Dollar Tree in their craft section for fall time. And then on the little house, I just added some more twine and a bow to the front of it. Now, if you're new to my channel and you have a YouTube channel and you love doing DIYs, I host a monthly challenge called the DIY challenge. The next one is on October 9th. And I also have an open call right now for my friend Fridays. It's where I allow people to team up with me. And as a group of girls, we do this really fun crafter circle where we hop around from each different channel and we all share on the same day. So if you're interested in either of those, let me know. This next project is so easy to do. We're gonna take this round sign and these cute witch legs that you can get at the Dollar Tree. And we are going to snap off or pop off, better yet, the sticks that we have on the witch's legs and then the sign we're going to flip it over and we're going to give it a couple cones of yellow paint. Now I decided to do three because I really wanted the paint to be bright and to not have anything popping through from the previous backside of the sign and then you're going to take the witch's legs and you are going to simply glue them into the place that you would like. So at this point, the yellow circle is going to look like the moon and the witch's legs are going to be glued on super cute to the side. And you wanna make sure there's enough room so that you can put a really cute saying or quote onto the side of your circle. So I'm going to sketch out the word witch because I wanted to make sure that the letters are kind of fun and you know got some personality and wonky looking and then I'm going to come back in with my Dollar Tree stickers and I'm going to add in the word the and then the words is in so we have the sign all together that says the witch is in and at this point once I've got all of my letters stuck on with my stickers I'm going to go back in with my fine tip brush and my black paint and I'm going to just take my time just going over it and filling in where I did with my pencil lines to complete the word witch this part is so fun and I just made sure I took my time like I do on all of my paint with my lettering whenever I do this part and it's so fun because you can make it as thick or whatever style you want and I don't know it's just me I hope you all give it a try and do this hand painting every once in a while on your projects if you have a Cricut or a silhouette that's always a really great option too or if you have some stickers from your scrapbook collection paper collection that will also always work then when I was done I made sure I sealed it all with Mod Podge because I wanted to make sure it had a nice seal and then on the sides I also added those little dash and dots I think those are so cute and then at the top I added a really cute gingham bow with the Dollar Tree ribbon that I picked up this fall then last, I'm going to take that existing stick that we had on one of the witch's legs and we are going to glue it right in the center. Now you could skip this part and just hang it up on your door or you could glue it on and stake it in your garden. And then to finish it, nail it down to hold it in place. For this next DIY, I actually had some inspiration come from Pottery Barn. Friends, sometimes the prices there, I just can't get over them. I knew we could make this for pennies. So I'm gonna take one of these stacking blocks and I'm gonna cut it down to where it's a perfect square 
where I think it's a like three fourths of an inch by a three fourths of an inch. And then we're going to glue on with some E6000 and some hot glue for that short term, long term hold. And we're going to glue two of them to the side of this little square. We're trying to make sure that it's long enough of a bar to be able to put the glass hurricane jar that you can get from the Dollar Tree in their frame and candle section. And then we're going to rotate it to the other side and add two more so now you'll have a big X. And then at this point you're going to put your hurricane glass jar onto the X and we're going to add on the sides to hold it in place. Again, I've seen a couple friends do this, but I wanted you all to see, don't ever pay those high prices <laughs> that stores have. I do love Pottery Barn, I won't lie. I think some of their stuff is pretty. I think I've bought something from them a couple of times, but I, it's always on sale. And I just can't believe that this particular item that they wanted, you know, $30 or more. And here I am, I'm making it for like a dollar and 10 cents. So at this point I decided to paint it black. You could always leave it the wood, but I wanted to make sure that it had a nice clean finish. And then when you're done, add a candle and put it out for display. Again, if you are new to my channel, I actually have another channel that's called Heidi Sample Home. Right now over on that channel, I've been decorating my house for fall, so come on by, check it out. I'll link it at the end of this video and down below in my description box. This next project is going to be taking these palettes that they have over at the Dollar Tree. You'll need four of them as well as some tongue depressor sticks, popsicle sticks from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to be taking my wood glue, I'm going to put a dot, and then I'm going to come back in with some hot glue and add that onto it as well because we are going to be butting these four pieces up to each other to create a box. Now I did see my friend Jazz over at DIY Home and Crafts. She used to be DIYs with Jazz, but she changed her channel recently. I actually saw her come out with this just a couple of days ago on her channel and I thought it was funny. She turned hers into a really cool light, but I wanted to use mine for decor for Thanksgiving. I thought this could be really pretty if you like that modern boho farmhouse look to your projects for your home and your decor. So what we're gonna do at this point, once you've got all the sides all glued together, you're gonna wrap around some tape because we're going to paint it. Now you could always stain it or just paint it a solid color. I thought it would be really pretty to give it that modern vibe to it to add a color just halfway on this container that we're building. So I'm gonna go with a really pretty mossy dark almost a foresty green color. I thought this was so pretty and it lends well going into that Thanksgiving Christmas season. It kind of has that vibe and you're going to see the floral picks that we use at the end that are going to have a white pumpkin on it. So it could continue to go over into that Christmas season, which is going to be really pretty and neutral for this time of year. Now, again, I'm going to link Jazz's project down below because it was so funny how similar our two projects were or I guess great minds think alike and it just happens you know we're all shopping at the same stores anyway I just want to make sure I give her a shout out go over and check her out you'll love her channel she's so inspiring and I just think she's the cutest thing ever let her know if you go over and check her out let her know that I sent you over I'm gonna link the exact video where she does her project too because the steps are like almost identical all right, so once you've got that painted, you notice that I didn't put the bottom on yet because I didn't want to struggle with the paintbrush getting down inside of there. So I painted it first and then I added my base by using those sticks that I cut down to size. And then now inside, this is where my project gets different from Jazz. I took some foam core and I painted it the exact same color on its side just to camouflage that foam being down in there. You don't want to see that <laughs> coming through your your pretty project that you just painted so I added that color glued it down with some hot glue and a little bit of E6000 and now I'm coming back in with my florals I just think that this would be so pretty on a table if you're hosting Thanksgiving and I'm going to add in these two different florals from the Dollar Tree one has more of a wispy look to it I thought it was so beautiful. And then the other one has this pine cone and berries and white pumpkins. Now at this point, 
you don't have to do this. I wanted to make it look more farmhouse, which has always that distressed look to it. You could skip this step, but I'm coming back in with some white paint and just very, very lightly adding on some of that depth and texture, that distressed look to it. And then I thought it would be so pretty to take the nautical rope that they have at the Dollar Tree that I finally found, was hunting for this one for months. I finally found some. And I'm gonna just wrap it around and I'm going to purposely place the rope so that it doesn't shift and pull off over time. And once I've got that all in place, I'm gonna take some glue and I'm gonna come right into the middle part of the twist, twist it tight so it doesn't come undone, and then I'm gonna hold it and fray the ends. This is gonna keep it from unraveling and going everywhere and creating a giant mess. Couldn't this be so pretty? You can paint the box however you want and display it in your home for Thanksgiving. I hope you're enjoying the video so far. Now remember, I'm over on Instagram. Come on over and say hi to me. I share a lot of my things over there and even some sneak peeks. I also host a challenge once a week where it's called the Dollar Tree DIY Tour where you don't have to create a video. You can just share an image of your projects. And it's so fun because it's a big group of girls that play along. So if you're interested, come on over to Instagram, send me a message, and I'll give you all the details on how to play along and share your beautiful projects over there. For this project, we are gonna be using three different fabrics, orange, yellow, and white, three sticks from the Dollar Tree, three of these, foam cones and two wood stars. To start, we're gonna go ahead and fill those wood holes that were drilled out from the twine that was able to be able to hang up the star. We're gonna fill those in with some wood filler from the Dollar Tree, and then we're gonna slowly, with the right size that you need for your dowel sticks that we're gonna be putting into this, we're gonna drill out two holes. Make sure you don't go through your craft table because that would just be terrible. And I'm gonna add in some wood glue as well as some hot glue. Now I found wood glue at the Dollar Tree which was really exciting. So look in your craft section to see if you can find some in your store. And then I'm gonna just put these two dowel sticks down inside of there and hold them until they nice and straightly glued hot in place. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that third stick and we're gonna put it into the top cone and then into the bottom tone to create a taller tree because we're gonna create two different heights of this tree that we're making, this candy corn tree. And once you've got those nice and dried, you're gonna go ahead and move on to your fabric. So I'm gonna create a slit at the top and then just rip it all the way down. I love how it has this rough edge to it. It gives it that farmhouse look for the fall and Halloween time. I am not a big fan of the creepy side of Halloween. I've said that before here on my channel. I like the more whimsical side of the cute pumpkin faces and the friendly witch and the cute cat and candy corn, pumpkins, all of that stuff. I'm not into the blood and the gore. Ooh, that's just not my thing. But I thought this would be a cute project for anyone who is along that same wavelength of thinking is me or you can also turn it into more darker colors for a Halloween more gorier side of Halloween if that's your jam too no judgment <laughs> it's just not my thing so you can see here that I'm basically taking those fabric strips and I'm pleating all the way around my cones and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do two yellow two orange and then two white and when you get to the very top of your cone you're gonna want to make sure that it's nice and finished at the top where you're taking your time pleating it and going nice and close to the top you're gonna see it right here where I'm just kind of pushing it up towards the top and the very last one it's a pretty thin slit of the white because you want it to be able to come nice and close to the top and then I'm gonna add a cute button for a little bit of a nice pop at the top a cute little detail it was a little orange button and then we're going to add it onto our stick and our star make sure it's nice and straight before you let it go so it's not crooked and then come in with some white paint or whatever color you want to paint your star and your stick at the bottom I went with white and I did two coats to finish the look
For this project, we are going to be taking these little buckets or potting pots from the Dollar Tree. They have these around springtime and I've been holding on to them and I thought I could turn this into something really cool. So we are going to make a mini urn that you would see out in the front of a porch. I thought this would be so cool. So we're using some E6000 and some hot glue and together these make the cutest little urn and we're going to make it look more like a cement or concrete urn. I thought that would be really pretty to do that. So once those are all glued together and they're nice and set and hard, then we're gonna take some white paint and come in and give it a quick coat of white paint. Now I did this because I wanted to allow this wood filler, this putty that you can get from the Dollar Tree, I wanted to give it something to bond to, to hold it nice and together. And I went all over the whole thing, creating a lot of depth and texture. This is what's gonna make it look like like it's cement or concrete where it's a nice beautiful texture on it. Then we're going to come in with a bunch of different tones of gray until we get the desired look that we want. You're going to add in some darker, some lighter, and then at the very end you're going to bring in the last which is white and you're going to lightly dry brush all over it. Once that's all done, I sealed it with some Mod Podge to make sure nothing chipped over time and it stayed nice and strong and sturdy looking like it's concrete. And then I'm going to come in and add my piece of foam, push it down into place and add some hot glue glue. This is going to allow it to stay in place if it ever gets knocked over and things don't fall apart. I like my stuff to just be nice and sturdy whenever I make things. Now I'm going to take that really whimsical dainty flower that they have at the Dollar Tree. I stuck that in first and then I'm adding in this really pretty leaf pumpkin option they had at the Dollar Tree this year. I loved these. I thought they were so cute and when you cluster them together they look like a mini tree. I thought this was so fun because when I brought all of them together at the base and wrapped it with twine that became the look of a trunk and all together it just looks like a mini tree inside of this urn which is so cute to put on a table somewhere in your home. So make sure you wrap your twine nice and tight and then at the bottom make sure you add some glue so everything holds into place and then you're going to take some of this moss that they have and you're going to just add in some hot glue and keep massaging it in. Make sure you use a popsicle stick so that you don't burn your fingers. That's what I like to do whenever I get into tricky parts so I don't hurt myself. And you're just going to keep massaging it into place so that you get it nice and packed in. And then you're ready to put it out for decor. This project is so easy. Now I know a lot of us picked these up when these were first brought out to the Dollar Tree and they still have some of these at the Dollar Tree. I found one actually recently. So I don't know if it's an item they're carrying all the time, but I picked it up knowing that this jar could be turned into a cute pumpkin fall Halloween look and you can do whatever colors you want. I decided to go with white on mine but it could also be really cute if you painted it orange as well and I'm just going to go in with a couple coats of my paint color that I desire and just follow along that line and once it's dry I'm going to sketch on the face that I want a nice happy pumpkin and once I've got all of my lines all in place ready to go I'm going to come back in with an angled brush and I'm going to paint in the eyes and the smile and you could add a nose if you want I decided not to add a nose I don't know why I just liked him more without him having a nose on it and I thought that this was so sweet and just take your time on your corners if you make a mistake it's not a big deal you can always just touch it back up again because we're working with paint always let it dry if you want to do a touch up let it dry first really well and then go back in and touch up any lines you might have accidentally gone over. Then at the top to give it some more detail so it's not so plain I added some twine and then little pieces of fabric cut into triangles to make a banner across the top. I thought this was a very sweet whimsical touch to put at the top of this mason jar pumpkin and then to finish the look I added on a couple of twine bows on the sides to make it look so whimsical and fun.
For this project, we are going to be taking this super popular witch form hat. I have seen many people trying to find these and I've seen a lot of friends also using them and turning them into hats. But we're going to turn ours into a cornucopia flower front door decor piece. Or it could also be like a bundle of flowers, however you want to look at it. But we are going to take it and cut it apart. We're going to take off the rim of the hat. We don't need that part. And then it's going to want to break right here on this piece. If it does, it's not a big deal. You're going to just take some twine, glue it, and wrap it around until it holds those two pieces together. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to be covered up by the burlap, which we're going to be using next. So now at this point, go ahead and take out your burlap and you're going to just start gluing it around to create that cornucopia look. And the cool thing about this wire, you can also bend it and shape it and twist it however you want to make it look where it's more of a curved look. I just kept mine straight. So this is why I'm saying that maybe it looks like a bundle of flowers too for the fall time. It's just whatever <laughs> your preference is and what you think. But I was going for a cornucopia. I like how it turns out. I'm going to take this really pretty mesh brown color and I wrapped it all around to give it that woodsy look on it. This part is so quick, so fast to create it. This project seriously took me maybe like less than 10 minutes to do and it's so beautiful at the end to put out on your front door or somewhere in your house if you want to hang it up. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to stuff it with the florals that we like. The Dollar Tree had so many pretty florals this year and I had so much fun mixing and matching all of these different colors, bringing them all together to create a really soft farmhouse look to my florals. I didn't want anything harsh in here. I wanted it to look like we would see natural fall colors out there where it was a lot of creamy brown tones and some ivories. And I'm just bringing it all together until I get the look that I want in my florals, making sure that I cut apart the flowers versus trying to just stick the whole thing in as a unit where you see that plastic stem. You can actually see one over to the right by my twine. I don't ever like putting them in like that. I like to separate them. Then we're gonna take that really cute burlap bow that they had where it's got this pattern on it and we're going to just glue down the first one and then on the second one we're going to cut off the tails and we're going to add that right onto the bow to make it look more full and then we're going to bring on the two tails and glue those into place to make a really pretty bow to complete the look. For this project, I'm going to be using this plastic pumpkin that you could pick up at the Dollar Tree or Walmart. They have them all over the place. And the inspiration, this is going to be a look for less. I found these galvanized and black pumpkins at Pottery Barn and I could not believe the price they were. They actually both sold out. The last one that's left is the mini one at Pottery Barn in black and they were so expensive. Friends, we're gonna do this for a dollar, <laughs> just a dollar. And I'm gonna show you how you can make it look like galvanized metal. So what I did first is I sketched on the face. I used the inspiration from Pottery Barn's cute pumpkins. And I'm just gonna go in with my craft knife. And once you create the first initial hole, make sure you don't cut your fingers, keep it back. It cuts really easy where you can just drag it along and it just cuts out the piece that you need. The trickier part is around the mouth. That one you do have to take a little bit slower of a time coming around those curves, but basically it cuts out so easy. And if you feel like the craft knife is a little too tricky, you could always just cut the initial hole and then come in with scissors and cut that that way as well. But it cuts really easy and then once you're all done and you've cleaned up all your lines, you're ready to paint it. So I went ahead and took mine outside and just spray painted the whole thing a light gray color just a real quick coat on the inside and the out because you don't want to leave the orange on the inside or whatever color your pumpkin is that you picked up and you're going to make sure everything's gray and then you're going to come in with a darker gray color 
and you're going to just tap it on and you're going to come in with a paper towel and keep tapping 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 then you're going to add in an even darker tint you're going to go even less on these spots and you're going to tap those all into place as well just continuing to add on these layers and you want to make sure that it's spotchy looking just like this and as you've got that dark one on then next you're going to bring back in lighter colors because you want to create that depth where it makes it look like the galvanized metal then once you've got the dark one you're going to come in with your light tap 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 until you get the look and you're going to go all the way down to white now at the very end with white you're using almost the tiniest spots and you're just creating that depth and raised look that you would see on galvanized metal and then to complete the look and to make sure that there's not any issues with it you have two different choices you can seal it with a matte so it looks more like a rough metal mod podge or you can can seal it with a glossy one and have it look shiny. I hope you enjoyed my video today. Leave a comment down below to let me know which project you liked out of these 10 that I've shared today. Thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up as well. It always helps out my channel and click the subscribe button if you're new. And until the next episode, bye friends.